Hi everyone, today I have, wait, let me count, seven books for you all about anti-bullying. October is National Bullying Prevention Month, and while this is something that should be talked about all year long, it's especially important during this month. So what I have for you today are not only books that talk about bullying, but ways to be kind as well in order to help students build empathy towards one another and really understand what it means to bully someone and what effect that has on others. And that bullying can appear in so many different ways. And I think each of these books points that out in ways that students will understand. So if you want to hear all about these books, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button and we'll get started. The first book that I have is called Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon, and I absolutely love this book. In this story, there is a young girl named Molly Lou Mellon, and she's this tiny little thing, but her grandmother teaches her to stand tall and to accept and be proud of who she is. When one day Molly moves to a new school, there's a bully at the school and he's constantly teasing her for different things. But each time she stands up for herself, she's proud of who she is. And he almost gets embarrassed that he's teasing her so much. And in the end, he kind of comes around and realizes that he needs to not bully her anymore. And she thanks her grandmother at the end for giving her such great advice. So Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon is a great book because it shows how to stand up to bullies, even though it can be really hard sometimes. To be proud of who you are and to not let the words or actions of others get you down. So Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon is a great anti-bullying book for students for you to share in the classroom. The next book that I have is a little more serious, a little more solemn. But it really gets to the point of bullying and how it affects others and how it even affects the bully in the story. In the book Each Kindness, there's it's told from the point of view of a young girl and in her classroom they get a new student named Maya. And at first glance you can tell that Maya doesn't have as much money as the others in the class. Some of her clothes are dirty or ripped. And so the girl telling the story turns away from her. She ignores her. Maya reaches out many times to ask her to play or to do things with her and is always kind. But the girl telling the story ignores her every time, doesn't want to play with her. Until one day Maya moves away and doesn't come back and she doesn't have a chance to apologize to her. She realizes that each thing that she could have done, each step of kindness that she could have done, she didn't do. And she regrets that and she feels guilty about not helping Maya, not being her friend, even when Maya was nothing but kind to her. So this one really reaches to the point where being a bully isn't necessarily about the things that you do, but sometimes the things that you don't do. By, being, by ignoring someone or not playing with them, you're being unkind. And I think that this book really touches on that and lets these students know that it's important to apologize, it's important to reach out to others because you might not always get the chance. This next book is one of my all-time favorite books and I know I've shared it on here before. This one is called Strictly No Elephants. And in this story, the young boy has a pet elephant and he's so proud of his pet and he's really excited because it is pet club day and all the kids are gonna bring their pets to pet club. But when he gets there, there's a sign on the door that says strictly no elephants. And he and his pet elephant walk away so sad that they weren't invited. That just because his elephant is a different type of pet doesn't mean that he can't be a part of the club and devastated he takes a seat on the bench where he meets another girl who has a pet skunk and he says oh were you not invited either and she says I don't think they would want me to join because I have a different kind of pet too so together they decide to form their own club where every 
everyone is welcome, no matter what pet they have. They are accepting of everyone and all pets. And it's an amazing turn of events where they were not included, but in turn they decided to change and make sure that everyone was included in their club. And again, this really brings home the point that including others, no matter what they look like or what pet they have or how they act, is so important. And so another great anti-bullying books to share in the classroom. The fourth book that I have, I will say, makes me cry almost every time I read it. This one is called The Invisible Boy. In this story, there's a young boy named Brian. And when you see him for the first time in the story, he's drawn in black and white where the rest of the images are in color. You realize that Brian is just this quiet, shy student and he's kind of invisible to the students and almost even to the teacher. No one pays attention to him. He follows all the directions, but nobody really is friends with him. They, it's kind of like he's not even there. and It's kind of sad um, and he's not upset. He's just in his own little space. And then one day a new student comes to the class and the food that he's eating is a little different than what the other students are eating and they start to make fun of him. And Brian can see how upsetting this is so he writes the new student a note and the two of them become friends. And as they become friends and someone finally starts to notice Brian, more color is added to his picture throughout the story until the very end where he's included in a big group and is happy and getting along with everyone and they finally see him he is finally in full color in the story as well this would be an amazing book to share with students of all ages because i think they would all get something different out of it by not acknowledging someone by not seeing that they're there is kind of a type of bullying and that even just saying hi to someone or inviting them to play in your game at recess can make a huge difference in someone's life. And this is a great book for building empathy with students. And before I go on to the next couple books, I just wanted to point out that all of these books are linked in the description box down below so that you can grab them for your classroom or borrow them from the library. And every single one of these books, I have a lesson plan that goes along with it. And I will leave all of those linked down below as well, so that not only can you read these books aloud with your class, but I have discussion questions to go along with each one, as well as activities, crafts, games, and even task cards, so that you can really bring the themes and concepts of each book to life in your classroom, and your students will get that chance to connect with each book. Let's continue with the books though. This next one I have is a, another fun one. This one is called Enemy Pie. In the story, the boy is so excited for summer. It's gonna be a great summer. And then Jeremy Ross moves into the neighborhood and he is the boy's number one enemy. He doesn't really have a lot of good reasons for why, but he just doesn't like him. And he thinks that Jeremy doesn't like him either. So he's trying to figure out how to get rid of Jeremy Ross and how to make this the best summer ever. So his dad says, you know what? I have an idea. We're going to make enemy pie. And he's so excited. He's like, oh, I wonder what disgusting, gross things he's going to put in this pie. And his dad says, I'll make the pie. You go and you have to spend a whole day with Jeremy. You have to play with him, have fun, be kind to him. He's like, well, that seems kind of weird, but I guess I'll give it a try if He'll be gone after this, it's worth a shot. So he spends the whole day with Jeremy and they actually end up having a lot of fun together. They play all sorts of different games in the neighborhood and he even lets him come up into his tree house, which he doesn't usually let people up there. And then his dad calls him in to have the pie and he's thinking, oh no, I'm friends with him now. I can't give him this pie. We're having such a great time together. I can't ha let him eat this yucky, gross thing sitting at the table he's getting more and more nervous and then Jeremy eats the pie and he's like oh this is delicious and he's like no don't eat it and then he realizes his dad's eating it too and then he realizes there's actually nothing wrong with the pie that it's quite delicious and the two of them make plans to get together the next day and have more fun together and your students can put together the idea that there's really nothing called enemy pie 
it's just a regular pie, but the spending time with that person, getting to know them, is making those friendships, is helping you get along with others, not judging them by one of their actions or what you think they're like. So it's important for students, especially when we're talking about bullying, to really get to know somebody. Another great book to read for National Bullying Prevention Month in October. Now, this next book is, can you guess what it is? <laughs> I seem to have lost the cover for this, the book jacket for it, but this one is, if you can't tell, We Don't Eat Our Classmates. Now, this is a silly, fun, crazy book that your students will love. It's one of my favorites, but it also has kind of a bullying aspect to it. So in this book, Penelope Rex is so excited for her first day of school, and Penelope Rex is a dinosaur. She gets to school and she realizes that all of her classmates are children. And, oh, children are delicious. And all she wants to do is eat these children. And the teacher keeps telling her, Penelope, you can't eat your classmates. And so she, but they're just so hard to resist and she keeps trying to eat the children and they keep getting pretty upset and then nobody really wants to play with her because they don't want to be eaten. And then she's sitting and she's looking at the fish in the classroom and she puts her finger in the fish bowl and the fish bites her and she gets a little bit of taste of her own medicine. She realizes, oh, I didn't like being bitten. I don't think my classmates like being bitten either. So then she tries really hard. She makes a couple mistakes tries really hard not to eat her classmates and they all become friends and they include her in the activities that they're playing. So this is important to remind students to treat others with respect, treat them with kindness so that you can all play and have fun together. We Don't Eat Our Classmates is a great read aloud to talk about anti-bullying in the classroom. Now this last one is Be Kind and in Be Kind, this one is more about showing kindness to others, not so much about not bullying or what it means to bully, but how you can be kind to others and the opposite of bullying. So in this story, um, a young girl sees that one of her classmates spills juice on herself and she's so upset and she runs out crying. And this girl starts to think about how can she help her make her feel better? How she knows she's embarrassed or upset, what can she do to cheer her up? And this kind of starts her thinking about different ways that we can be kind. And I love that this book gives such concrete examples of how to be kind, ideas that students can take back right away and use immediately throughout the day in the classroom. How they can help their classmates out, how they can be kind at home, how they can be kind out in the community. And because I love this book so much and I think it has such a positive message, I have a free lesson to go along with it and I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. But this interactive read aloud comes with discussion questions that you can use as you read the book with your students to really get them thinking about ways that they can show kindness to others. There's activities to go along with it as well as task cards to help them really internalize this concept of being kind, helping others and showing kindness, which I think should really be highlighted during Bullying Prevention Month. Not only do we need to talk about what it means to bully or how to stand up to bullies, but how you can be the opposite of that to encourage that kindness and how you can help others. So these were some of my favorite books that you can share during National Bullying Prevention Month in the month of October. And I hope that you can use some of them in your classroom as well as some of the lessons that I've created to go along with each one. And again, these are not books that should be read just in October, but should be used all throughout the year to really help your students understand what it means to bully others, how to stand up for themselves, and most importantly, how to be kind to others. If any of these books were helpful for you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button down below because I'll be back next week with more read-alouds that you can use in your classroom right away. Have a great week.